Welcome back. We're trying to ascertain Akra's physical state here as to whether or not he could actually commit the murder in the ways that we probably have figured out at this point. Because it definitely involves the bust. I, I believe, like, he's got the bust attached to a rope and he dropped it down below. But the point he's trying to make is that he believes, well, he's saying he believes, that it's impossible for him to know the location of the person down below. So the only way I can think of is like there has to be some kind of marker down there. There has to be something like that. And based on like the evidence we've got here, we're not going to present it, we're going to check it, don't worry. Based on this here, the only thing I can think of is the box. Because in Ben's statement, he didn't mention that the person who looked like Max was carrying a box. And that never came up, so it's like, huh. Where did the box come from? It was placed there. Ready and waiting for someone to come over to it, and when they were there, boom. And that's when something dropped on them and killed them. And I believe he killed the wrong person. He was probably trying to kill Regina as payback for what happened to his brother. So we're going to pursue that kind of logic as we go through this. So I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I completely agree. I believe you could. I've got nothing to question you on there. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. Yep, can't really compete with that in any way. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. Uh, yeah, I don't... This thing is like... I disagree, but agree at the same time, but I don't have the rope as evidence. Do I? That's the only sh issue here. I do not have the rope that I need for my entire thing to come together here. Like, there has to be a rope. Has to be. Otherwise, I don't know how you did it, is the best way of putting it. Has to be a rope. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. Yeah. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. So at this point, I'm going to go with a crime photo. Or should I go with a box? I'm going to go with the crime photo because that gives it a way more... Just worried what it's going to say. Because <laughs> it's that sort of thing. What I'm saying makes sense. But it's not been exactly a smooth sailing through this one, has it? So, uh, present. Akro. Didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection! Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But, but I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should... Take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box the victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? I just remembered something. It's a heavy box as well. So you're not going to be able to just pick it up and go, are you? Hmm. Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Thank you, Phoenix! Which means... That this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down... Was exactly the same moment the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. Oh, so something was hot, like something was being held down by the weight of the wooden box. You lift the wooden box, it lets the bus go. But how do you pull the bus back up? Two ropes? I. Hmm. Hmm. You. You mean, if the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box? There would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. 
Because that's the thing, I was, I was thinking of like, an own f like my own flaws in my own logic there, it's like... Well, even if he placed the box there... He'd still have to see when he was at the box, but no, if he was lifting the box, even though it was still heavy, it took him some exertion, it would be holding up the bust, that's why it's heavy. So lifting up, lifting up the box dropped the bust. So he killed himself accidentally, sort of, part of a scheme, which is also murder. <gasps> yes. I see it all coming together. Sort of. Oh, there's a wooden box. It's quite heavy. Oh! Oh, da, da, da! This is unbelievable. Finally. Some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Yes, yes, yes. Now I just gotta keep going. And there's only one way to go from here. Forward. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. No! Oh. Allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix Wright! <laughs> The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. The weight of the box. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. But just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Or you'd do some serious damage to your back. Always lift with your legs. So you've got to squat down, you've got to squat down. Trust me, I've pulled my back before. I've got to tell that story. It's It was the day before Uncharted 2 was coming out, and I was so looking forward to it. I had days off from work, ready to play that lovely game. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm, I'm going to have a cup of tea now. So of course, I lifted up the kettle, thinking it already had water in it, ready to refill it a little bit. It was empty. But I lifted it up with the force of the idea of it being, you know, have some weight behind it. I launched the kettle like a rocket. And it pulled my back as a result. I was in pain for weeks. Try it too was good though. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be at approximately the same place. Fool! Oh, definitely, like a rocket, yeah. Okay, bird. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. Okay, good. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You, you, did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? I remember. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm, then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I'd like you to remember one important fact, Acro. Manny the monkey likes shiny objects. Max's bust, as we shall see here, has shiny cards on it. It's that simple, Acro. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? Oh, yes, definitely, I mean, how would it? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that! Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Uh. 
tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bust from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. All right, Mr. Knight, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? Has to, has to be Money the Monkey. Right? A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Quah! A crow. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Oh, he deserves a new roommate. Whoa. Oh, da, da, is it all da, Miss Von Karma? Where is the bust in question at this moment? I, um, I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon? Surely by accident? Yep. It's possible. Maybe Akro saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Oh, the birds went. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Akro was the murderer. Moron! Uh, definitely a moron. What? Mr. Ride's argument was so circular I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Oh! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You forgot the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? Oh, not motive again. You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Oh, all right then. Ah. There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. There's loads of reasons. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? He saw Max's b Ow! I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Yes, it does. Objection! Au contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. 
but he didn't have to actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Oh, an alien? How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? Are you speaking to yourself right now? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It would be easy to hang one off of those cards in the bust's hands. Idiot. Who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? Doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute, Mr. Wright. I mean, kind of does. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case. Don't you agree? Don't oh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? The only person there. It's like... It has to be you. I'm not, not entirely sure you put it on the bust, but you're the only person there, so... The fool. Him? You are saying... It was the victim himself. Russell Berry. That's what I'm saying. He... I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Thank you. Otherwise, I'm going to get very confused. <laughs> then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint. Anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night. Let's step back in time. The year was 1947. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust. And dangled the bust out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trilo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim, You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true, it can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. What? And the impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. The impact also caused the sound of a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. And that witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls the Clown. When Moe looked out of his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Moe saw the bust being raised with a cloak dangling on it. Primarily because, in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is how the magical murderer disappeared into the sky came to be. Why, why the drum? So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off 
is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Akro, it could have only been you. Akro has been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick. They say they want evidence. Just explain how they can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. Well, for me, it's simple as... If we, if we, if we check, like, here, we can see what the, the bust looks like. Correct. And then, um... I want, I want a photo of, like... And he started to fly, basically, from like from Mo's testimony. It's like you could see what he looked like, and it had a certain thing on its head. But what was found at the scene of the crime? The, the hat. So how did the hat get there? I, there wasn't two hats. So Take that. the problem is Max's three symbols. You know the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, and white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool. Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, Remember what Mo said yesterday? He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. So do you want explanation for that? The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Oh yeah, well, what about the roses? Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Objection! Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what the ventriloquist said in court? He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. It's because it's the back. It's that simple. The clown said there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course. I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Oh, well, that explains everything then. Well done. Oh, da da! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel.
Well, so much for that, Fairy. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, uh, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive, ah. Uh... This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Oh yes, uh, what is the motive? Uh, oh! Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Acro's story. And learn about his relationship with the ringmaster. And his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deeply respected the ringmaster. Acro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well, however, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten minute recess. To be continued. No. December 30th, 2.17 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 5. Can't believe it. Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is, but I think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, and am I that hated? <clears throat> Acro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? Psst, psst, cough. But, but, I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? But you're not, which is kind of the reason why. Cough, hey. Hey, pal. Gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, forget it, I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, Detective, I'm sorry. Look, why don't you... Relax a little. I've got some really tasty milk. How about a card trick, detective? Uh, oh, well, if you insist. Now about that evidence you mentioned? What is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yep, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Hmm, would Miss Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? I'm expecting like a, oh crap, yeah, oh no, um, give it back. That's why this is all a secret. Ah, respect, Gumshoe, respect. Huh? Look, details are on a need-to-know basis. And we're not really allies or anything. But everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know, Miss Von Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Our plan. Is someone coming back from the dead, maybe? Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me. I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part? I'm not sure. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Uh, don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me?